This is a quick intro to angles as they're talked about in section 12.1, the start of our triangle trig chapter. Um, and what's new about this, you know you're familiar with angles from geometry, but what's new about this is that there's various different things that angles can measure. And the two big things are the first one is the ordinary notion of just the angle between two rays, or two lines, but usually two rays is better to think about. And so there's an angle. Maybe that angle is, you know, 40 degrees or something like that. Just a measure of what two different directions and how different the directions are. And so that would make sense that that's 40 degrees. And then there's, you know, pretty big angles like maybe 150 degrees. And of course, in the middle is a very, very special angle, a right angle, 90 degrees. And these guys uh, fit into triangles. For example, you know, we do a lot of stuff in geometry analyzing what we can say about triangles. And there's going to be, you know, angle A, angle B, angle C. <coughs> and we know, for example, for a triangle, they sum up to 180. And certainly in a triangle, it doesn't make any sense for those angles to be more than 180. And it's hard to actually imagine at first what it would m even mean for an angle to be more than 180 degrees. 180 degrees exactly is a degenerate kind of angle. It's a straight angle. That's certainly useful to think about. It's what happens when the rays are opposite. But if I think of <coughs> those rays as like starting here, then going to here, then going to here. Maybe here's a good way to think about it. Think about it as these two, these are like two sticks, two arrows actually with arrow tips on them. And they're hinged. They're connected with a hinge at the at the middle. And then sort of gradually open up that hinge. That they These rays get more and more and more different in direction until they're opposite. But then if you go beyond that, then it's reasonable to say, well, okay, wait. Now the angle is just on the other side and it's less than 180 degrees. But what we're going to be doing in a lot of cases, um, we're kind of we're going to work up to it. But in a lot of cases, we actually want to pay attention to the how this process happened. That it started at 40, then 90, then 150, then 180. And actually, we want to think about this angle. Even though it can't possibly fit inside a triangle, uh, it's still an interesting angle to think about. And so that's going to be the other way to think about it. So. <clears throat> we definitely always want to think about angles between rays and think of them as fitting inside triangles, and that's going to be a big thing. It's going to be the main thing in this chapter, and that's why it's called triangle trig. But they want to get us used to the idea of, of different angles, and that's the second thing we're going to often measure with angles, which is rotation. So an angle can measure the amount and direction of a rotation. And now, I can still picture it in the same way. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these kinds of pictures and we're going to label them start and finish, or I'm just going to say S and F and the other ones. And so let's say, I, I start, like maybe I start with, I just have one arrow, and I, it's, it's hinged at the, at, at here, it's like a spinner like in a in Twister or some other, you know, some childhood game. <coughs> I start out here, and I just, I like my pen, for example, and I rotate it by 40 degrees. I start out here, I rotate it counterclockwise, and I'm going to put an arrow here to indicate that there is a direction of this rotation. Like I put an arrow here. So, this is a counterclockwise rotation by 40 degrees. This is a counterclockwise rotation by 90, by 150, by 180. And then it totally makes sense to say, yeah, I'm going to rotate by more than that, maybe like by 220 degrees. So that's if that's the start and that's the finish, that's a counterclockwise rotation by 220 degrees. And we can go as far as we want with that. And of course, one very special one, of course, 180 is very special because that's exactly an about face turning exactly opposite from where you were. And that's, you know, we, we say that all the time. I, I did a 180. I did a, you know, a U-turn, go exactly back the way you came. Well, what about a 360 degree rotation? There, you go around, and where you start 
turns out to be the same direction as where you finish. But I want to pay attention to the fact that I did actually do a rotation. It's different from just sitting there in a lot of cases. So a 360 degree angle actually makes sense as an amount of rotation. And um, even though it ends up with you starting, ending up where you, where you started. So the terminology we have for that is that a zero degree angle is not equal to a 360 degree angle, but we say that they are coterminal. They have the same ending direction, because terminal you know, means the end. So with end, they have this, they share the same ending direction. If you start two objects in the same starting direction, and you don't move one of them, in other words, you move it by zero degrees, and you rotate the other by th exactly 360, they'll end up ending in the same direction again. Okay, so I'll show you some more examples of coterminal angles in a minute. We could go farther than 360. We could do a 720. We could start out and we could rotate around once and then twice. And this thing is going to go around and around twice and a 720 degrees. Another that's another one that's coterminal with 0 and with 360. And any multiple of 360 is going to go going to be like that. Okay? So that's how an angle can be something that we really are interested in. It's measuring the amount of a rotation. And when I say direction, well, we can rotate counterclockwise or clockwise. Counterclockwise, it turns out, just a mathematical convention that was developed a long time ago, strangely enough, given that it's counterclockwise, is considered positive. And just mathematically, the way <coughs> um, rotations are defined to work is that a positive direction for rotation is counterclockwise. It's a convention, it's artificial, but uh, we just have to live with that, okay? So what would this be if I start out with the arrow in this direction, direction and I rotate down here? And that's my final direction. That's opposite, that's clockwise. We're going to... Uh, abbreviate that a lot as CW, as a, and of course counterclockwise is going to be CCW. Um, but clockwise by 90 degrees, well, what we're going to do is we're going to say, I don't want to ha always have to say the word clockwise or counterclockwise. I'm going to use the fact that we already have a notation for taking a number and turning it into its opposite. This is the opposite of a plus 90 degree counterclockwise rotation. So we're just going to say that's a minus 90 degree angle. So that might, that's something that before today might not have seemed like it could make any sense. A minus angle, a minus 90 degree angle, what the heck would that mean? If you are using it as a way to describe a rotation, it totally makes sense. It's a 90 degree rotation, but in the clockwise direction, where this is the start and that's the finish. So that's coterminal, for example, with this positive angle. I could have gotten to the same ending point with a different process, which I might really want to pay attention to, but I'm going to get to the same ending point with a rotation three quarters around. That's three times 90, 90, 180, 270 degrees. And so 270 and minus 90 are coterminal. Okay. Now, I'm focusing so much on the end. What allows me to do that is all the angles I've drawn have been in standard position. Which means that the start is pointing along the positive x-axis. And we're going to try to draw angles as much as possible, especially starting out here to get this idea, this new idea, this more general idea of angles, is to draw it in standard position. So not all angles come to us in standard position, but we want to be able to say, well, what happens if we put it into standard position? And so that's what we're going to be experimenting with in this section, is draw a bunch of angles in standard position. The starting side is here, and then I think of it as a rotation by some amount, might be more than 360, might be negative, might be beyond negative 360 even. I might be minus 720, might be minus 1,000, might be minus a million, lots of different possibilities. And then I'm going to put down that final direction and see what, what that really looks like in the plane. Um, and one of the main things we're going to ask, one of the big questions that you'll see in the book, I've got to wrap this up, but it matters a lot what quadrant you end up in. Do you end up along an axis or along like the second quadrant, the first quadrant? We're going to pay a lot of attention to that because it's going to have a lot to do with what happens with the trigonometric functions, which is what we're working up to.